So I am going to share my screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, okay. Mm, I hope to. Well, this is the performance about a reactive spring. Um, this topic is also new for, for me. Uh, although of uh, this can have many years and well, we're going to start. Uh, the agenda for this presentation, uh, it's here. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, reactive programming and also a uh, we are going to talk about uh, about a uh, of project reactor reactive microservices reactive microservices with the spring boot integrations with common technologies uh, we are going to have a demo and uh, the reference that i am uh, using for this presentation and so the first part of the agenda is reactive programming so what is reactive programming? Well, reactive programming is a product programming paradigm uh, that is uh, based on three principal things. The first one is the data streams. Um, we have uh, data streams instead of uh, collections, for example, in case of the um, imperative programming like java and stuff like that so yeah we have a uh, data streams and uh, also we have a uh, functional programming that is a kind of declarative programming and this is a, a stateless a stateless programming uh, i mean uh, we have a we don't have a state in in, in the entities or in the items um, our values or are, are based on the arguments no and the other thing is that we have a synchronous uh, asynchronous programming and this is a non-blocking programming no in case of uh, the synchronous synchronous programming that is blocking um so we have a as, as i mentioned i have a or we have two kinds of a request processing that is blocking and not blocking request processing so in case of the blocking request processing and uh, we have request in our presentation layer we we do request and we do request to to serverless uh, threads so what happened uh, when we have the the server or, or when we have our controllers in the server uh, we are receiving requests we are creating a uh, threads for every request but this um the number of threads is limited no uh, and it's very expensive to create new threads so uh, every thread uh, it's uh, blocking uh, yeah maybe we can have uh, many threads running parallel at the same time but every thread is broken is blocking and is blocking during all the requests no so it's blocking in in or it it's blocking uh, the functionality and also maybe it's blocking the threads that we are using to connect with the database layer. In case of non-blocking request processing, and I'm sorry, and obviously uh, this is a synchronous programming now. In case of, of non-blocking request processing, uh, we are receiving a request from the presentation layer. And this request has information about the events that we are sending and also contains information about the response that we are receiving from the uh, thread no that 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 we are creating the interest the interesting thing is that we have a kind of event loop that is a uh, checking for next request and this never is blocking so uh, we can attend many requests without create new threads so it's obviously it's less expensive than this one 
And because you are running uh, threads in parallel, and maybe uh, and into the third is, is running the functionality uh, without not blocking, maybe it's, uh, the, the time decrease, no? The time that takes uh, your, your request decrease. And uh, obviously you have in this uh, kind of um, architecture, maybe you can have um, all your environment uh, in this way, no? Uh, on your um, controllers and also the communication or, or, or the flow into the controller. Uh, without the database layer, maybe it's also a uh, non-blocking. So it 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 would be uh, ideal ideal for for our architecture. So uh, the first uh, sorry the as as I mentioned um, the reactive oh, sorry yes the reactive programming is based on reactive streams. So. Um, what happened with reactive streams? Well, uh, the reactive streams uh, has a multiple data processing. Um, they can use to have uh, more space to faster uh, response times. And disrupts the bill by supporting the back pressure. Um, and as obviously, uh, we have a, a smaller UX experience. Um, I mean, the user can receive the information or, or the data in, in less time and it's more cohesive uh, data transfer. So, for example, in, in, in reactive uh, programming, we are working with uh, reactive streams or streams. So every cir circle in, in the image is a stream. So we can have a one stream in yellow color, in green color, in um, kind of blue color, and, and also blue color. So in this in this uh, image, we have four streams. And what happened? Maybe one of the stream is failing, that is represented with this uh, X. And uh, they also can have that, we, we can have a, a stream that's, was completed correctly. So these are the three signals that uh, every uh, diagram stream use. And, and well, this is the uh, normal flow, no? And if you can see, uh, we can, uh, well, this is a flat, a flat uh, flow. Oh, sorry. And uh, the other concept that it's important in reactive stream uh, is the back pressure. What happened with the back pressure? Well, uh, in this image, we can have, a, or we can see a three um, elements. That is the publisher, the consumer, and the UI. So for example, the publisher publishes a, 10 case, take 10 case APNs per second. But the consumer only can consume 6.5 events per second. So these 7.5 events per second are received for, for the UI. So we are uh, losing uh, to uh, 2.5 uh, events per second. So uh, the back pressure, um, it's a kind of flow or it's a kind of flow control that we can implement to avoid uh, or to um, push back against the production of data in, in our system. Uh, what happened? Well, happens when the data can render as fast as it needs to, um, can cause build up, and uh, no additional data packets can be transferred. No, uh, only a certain uh, number of packages are transferred. And well, um, in 
uh, currently exists a, a project that is called Reactor, and this a uh, project Reactor is. Uh, You send them, you send it, sorry, in Webflux, in a Spring Dara, and also in a Spring Cloud Guide Gateway. Um, the, the project reactor um, has uh, three um, things, element things. That is the core. Um, the core is non blocking, uh, provides efficient demand management, and uh, interacts with the Java functionality APIs. Um, also, um, it has sequence the from zero, one, and n elements that we can receive, and uh, all of them are represented with flux and and mono uh, classes and uh, sorry publishers, and also a uh, well. We have a non-blocking input at output. Um, this is good for microservices architecture and also uh, offers back pressure to network engines like HTTP, uh, TCP, and UDP. So uh, what happened with the reactive microservices? Well, uh, in case of microservices, our purpose when we are uh, creating a, a microservices architecture is uh, to accomplish with three uh, points. The first point is uh, the resource efficiency. Obviously, is about to have non-blocking code. And the next one is to have a easy, of, a easy of composition and that uh, we can uh, describe data that is coming from uh, REST calls, from web sockets, from message services like uh, or events like or every any database. No, and obviously we need to have asynchronous unbounded information, and maybe also we can have a small or or big a uh, synchronous information, and also uh, it's interesting to manage a good error handling. No. Um, because uh, we need to have a, a reli reliability services, and 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 yeah, no, it's are, are the the, the three principal goals. So, um, in case of a Spring, a Spring uh, has a involving in this moment the project reactor with a Spring Boot. This is the the things that a Spring is offering us. To, to manage the reactive programming in its ecosystem, no? So in this case, it happened in spring. Uh, so in this part is where I'm talking about reactive spring. So it's oriented to microservices and using uh, the spring boot. So uh, we have uh, two stacks in this moment that uh, Spring is offering. Uh, we have the reactive stack versus the serverless stack. So uh, for example, in, in, in case of reactive stack, we have a uh, Neri, that's a kind of server. And also we have serverless 3.1 plus containers. Uh, we have reactive stream adapters. And um, in case of serverless stack, we have serverless containers and we have serverless APIs. So um, in this part, um, it's the, the difference because in case of a reactive, a Spring is offering us a Spring security reactive versus a Spring security with the or associated to the serverless stack. Uh, we have a Spring web flux 
and that it contains the support to um, to the, the reactive uh, controllers and stuff like that, and uh, the Sprint versus the Sprint MVC. And also uh, we have the Sprint Data Reactive Repositories and also in versus uh, with Sprint Data Repositories. So for example, in case of Sprint uh, Data Reactive repository, Repositories, we have a, a databases like Mongo, Cassandra, Redis, that uh, all of them are known as SQL uh, databases. And also uh, we have an R2 DBC uh, connections to manage a relational uh, connection, well, reactive connections, but oriented to a SQL databases, relational SQL database. So um, in this case, um, what happened? Uh, obviously, the uh, sorry, Spring uses the or is implementing implementing sorry the reactor project, but also is uh, using uh, reactive streams to um, create all this ecosystem of reactive pro programming. So uh, we have in into the reactive streams uh, specification we have uh, four interfaces like uh, all of them uh, are represented in this uh, slide. So we have a publisher, that is this. And uh, we have a subscriber and we have a subscription. Um, in, in this um, flow, um, the publisher is responsible to uh, publish publishes data asynchronously to a subscriber. So the subscriber, it's a creating or, or, or to create a subscription. And the subscription, it's the um, the responsible or or may oh, sorry or the subscriber is going to ask for more information to the subscription. So uh, uh, maybe you need to have uh, okay, give me ten records uh, in this. Um, um, sorry, in this a uh, request, no, or 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 give me ten more and stuff like that. So also, uh, this um, subscriber has the ability to cancel uh, or to um, stop the asking for the new um, uh, for the new records. And and this kind of things is the back, back pressure. Uh, you are trying to uh, manage the flow of your information in order that the UI can manage the the the, the information and and they can receive more information. Um, and all of them is is uh, how to say is um, completely. Um, how to well the, the, the speed is uh, or or we can manage the speed uh, with our getting the information no and also we have the project reactor library that this project reactor library only contains two uh, classes uh, that. Both of them are publishers. Uh, one is the mono publisher, and the other one is the flux publisher. So, in case of mono, if you can see, uh, it's represented with zero or, or one. So, uh, we can have uh, a single or empty value, only one. So, uh, we have on next request if we are going to uh, emit uh, values. And uh, for every request on next, uh, can emit only one value at most. Uh, we have also the on complete signal when we finish. Uh, and also we can have the on error signal when our stream has failed. 
in case of flux, uh, uh, also is a publisher, uh, it represents zero to a unbounded sequence of values. Uh, we can also have the onnet request. Uh, we can emit a zero or unbounded values. And also uh, this can have the on error signal and maybe every, every stream uh, has error. So we are emitting the, the on error signal when this occurs. Um, in case of uh, mono and flux, mono and flux uh, has um, many methods, uh, but um, I, I am using uh, in, in, this, in this slide uh, the methods that I am going to use during our demo. And uh, well, the first method uh, is map. And, and I think map and flat map, uh, both of them, are the most common use methods, I think. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to decide which one of them is going to use. Uh, sometimes you need to use map, but in other cases, uh, you need to, to use a flat map because you are trying to transform, but also you need to have only one flow, you no? Know? And, and yeah, sometimes uh, when you are uh, coding, uh, you need to decide uh, what kind of method is going to, to use. So in case of map, map transforms an object into a different object. Flat map first transform an object, an object and after flat streams into a, only a stream. So for example, if you have a, two, two flows uh, during the time, maybe you need to transform these two, two flows and only one two, in, sorry, not only one flow or only in one stream, sorry. So um, when you need to do this, um, it's important that you use, or, or the only thing that you can use is to use flat map. Also, uh, we have, sorry, we have the switch if empty, uh, that in this case, uh, we change the stream when it's empty, the stream that we are receiving, if it's empty, we change to another stream. And uh, zip, uh, zips multiple resources, resources together. Uh, this is a kind of combination. Uh, just creates uh, one publisher. Um, and, and maybe we are going to, to have, or you, we are going to use when we are trying to create a zip. Uh, methods or when you are using the zip methods, among others. Um, what integrations uh, with common technologies? Or, well, integrations with common technologies. Okay, a Spring, um, as I mentioned, uh, has many projects and it, we have a Spring Data, we have a Spring Cloud, and, and also, uh, well, Spring offers uh, R2 DBC. So uh, in case of Spring uh, Data oriented to non-SQL, um, it has integrations with uh, MongoDB. Uh, you can use reactive uh, queries or, or reactive connections with MongoDB, uh, with Redis, and, and also with Cassandra, among others. Also, you can create a non-reactive, uh, sorry, reactive connections with a relational data bases. And for this, we are using R2DBC. And uh, this, this has support to uh, SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, SQL, H2, and Cloud, uh, Cloud Spanner from, from Google. And in case of Spring Cloud, uh, we have integrations with uh, for for Rabbit MQ and also for Kafka. So uh, I am uh, work. Uh, sorry, I will present our uh, well my my demo. So let me share my screen.
Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, cool. Well, um, as I mentioned, uh, Spring can well, Spring Reactive can support uh, connections with um, HTTP, uh, including WebSockets and TCP connections and UDP connections. So uh, for this demo, uh, I am going to uh, use a, a project that I create uh, with um, an HTTP connection uh, that is a REST controller. And also I am going to have a WebSocket connection. And uh, in the last uh, project, I have a kind of client that will connect with both of them. So, uh, okay, we are going to start with a company. Uh, that is uh, the first uh, project that I have. So um, when we are creating uh, or when we are using a, a reactive uh, spring project, uh, the first things that we are going to do is start with the start Sprint IO. So it's the same page that we create uh, other microservices. Um, so the thing is that um, we are going to, to change our dependencies, no? So for example, in case of, um, if, if I would have, would create a, a new project, well, yes, in this case, my project is on Maven. It will use Java. Um, some um, actually are do DBC in this moment and also uh, the reactive spring data connection. Uh, the last version that they, both of them work uh, good is with a spring, a spring boot 276. Uh, obviously there are these, no? So I am going to select this. And uh, well, I, I used to work with a Java 11. So for example, in add dependencies is going to change. Um, we are going to have the Spring Reactive. Um, Spring Reactive Web, for example, it's the first one. And we can uh, have also two um, RDC, RDBC. Give me a second. It's this one, Spring Data R2 DBC. Also, we have the other one that is, for example, a Spring Data Reactive MongoDB that is specific for, for connection to create a MongoDB that is in this moment the, the reactive uh, non SQL uh, database. And so, in I am going to, to select this one to, sorry. Um, for this example, also I am using a H2, that is a memory uh, database. So uh, with this, uh, and well, also you can use Lombok, no? So uh, these are the dependencies that uh, we can use in, in our first example that I, I made. So, um, this is to create a, an HTTP collection. I mean, I am going to create a REST controller. And yeah, so if we check the POM XML, uh, we can have the starter for data R2DBC. We have the starter for web clocks. That is the um, project uh, or the framework to to for a sprint in that contains the the reactive uh, controllers and also we can we have the ht h2 uh, our, uh, uh, database um and our r2 dbc uh, h2 connection no? or sorry dependency and the integer that is the the ID. It's it's our this uh, property. 
So once I have the company rep company repository, um, we have the uh, initializer. So for the initializer, uh, if, if you can see it's a component and it will be created as part of the application context in, in Spring. So uh, I am going to, to create uh, three, three things. The first uh, pipe that I am creating or that I, that I am using is the creation of the table. So uh, I am using a, 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 a SQL uh, DDL uh, syntax. So I am going to create a table that is called company, which ID uh, or, or ID column is the serial primary key. And the other column is the name of the company that will be a bar chart. And it can be null, not, yeah, it can not null. Uh, we fetch and we uh, is going to, to rouse up the data. So this is the, the pipe for DDL creation. And secondly, uh, we are going to have a uh, companies. So uh, here start the, the good things. So for example, um, I am creating this if, um, object. If I can see if I can say object, but it's a flux in reality. So this flux is a flux with a, a strings. It's a flux of strings. So it can be a kind of a list of strings, but it's a flux in 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 reactive programming. So uh, we are only uh, to use uh, with just well, we are initially sending this a flux and creating only only one flux with this list of names of companies. So uh, the next one, the next things is okay. I have a flux of strings, but I am going to save entities, no, and my entity that I am going to save in the table is company. So what I need to do, okay, this flux, I need to change the, the, the strings or I need to change a strings for company. So what happened? What with map, I am um, iterating or, or I am going to iterate uh, the, this flux and I'm going to say, okay, for every company name, we are going to create a new company object. I don't have an ID because the ID will be created by the database, but I have the company name. So uh, this is the, 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 the change. So now if I, can, if I see this one, if I use only this, You can see now our flux of the strings. Sorry, let me also show you. Ah, yes, and here. This is a flux of strings. So when we use map, we are changing our string for companies. So you can see now the company's name is this kind of object, flux of company. But um, in this case, um, we have, um, yes, uh, the, the flux of company and um, we are flooding map. It's, it's been a, uh, uh, a flux company also. But the thing is that in this case, we are creating the pipeline for saving every company in our uh, flux. So uh, every save is creating a new flux. So 
what we are doing is flatten, flatten all the uh, streams that we are creating with the safe method because for every safe method, uh, if we see safe, uh, sorry, give me, yes, safe, safe is creating or is returning, sorry, a mono. So for every safe that we do, we return a mono publisher. So with flat, what we are doing is these monos convert, uh, changing to in only one object that was flattened. And the as last step, uh, we are going to, to have, or we are going to, to return the flux of companies. If you can see the, the companies came from, uh, sorry, came from the, the database because we are using the compost company repository and we are uh, getting all of them. So uh, we have three pipes in this moment, but uh, we don't have any things that as a sub subscriber. So what happened? If we use subscribe or if we subscribe for every, to, sorry, to, to every uh, publisher, we have DDL publisher, we have companies publisher, and we have all publisher. So we, if we could, uh, subscribe to every publisher, we don't have the guarantee that occurs uh, first this, for example, or, or the order is first this, if because we we need to have the table created to use it, no? So we don't offer the, the guarantee if we subscribe because all of this is asynchronous. So what happened in this case? Well, because we need to have a, a table first, we are going to take our DDL uh, publisher and we we are going to use then many methods. With that many, uh, we are saying, when you are ready, then you, the next things that we need to execute is companies. And when companies is ready, the next thing that we are going to, to, to use is all, or to execute is all. And we are going to subscribe to this instruction. And as the last step, we are going to print the, the information from the database. So this is the, the flow for the initializer. So for example, if I run in this, if you see, I have the company, one, two, three, four, five, that all of them are the names and the IDs. If you can see, uh, I have a null uh, ID in every uh, element, but now the database has assigned the, the IDs. So uh, this is for the initialization. Now, uh, how can uh, um, create the microservice or, or the controller? Well, it's the same like in a microservice, normal microservices or synchronous microservices, sorry. So in this case, I am going to create to create the or the class company controller. And I yeah, I, I am using the REST controller annotation. So um, I am creating or I am auto wiring the, the company repository that is this one. And as you see, I have a, a method uh, that it will be a get a method for, for our request. And uh, I am going to return the uh, flux with the companies. In this case, I say flux of the company because I, I return in a flux. I am not returning a, um, a, a, an object in, in instead of this, I am returning a kind of promise that in the future, the user 
will have the companies. So it's the flux that I am returning. So uh, if I enter to this one, So this is the information that I have now. So we have our HTTP connection in this moment. We have a REST controller and that's it. It's only the, the thing and it's only for the purpose of the demo. Now, I also, I created a new information, or, sorry, data source. And in this case is a, a web socket. So, uh, this is for um, suppliers. So we have companies and uh, their suppliers for every company. So for example, in this case, well, uh, if we remember, we created only five companies. And uh, in this, um, for, for this approach, uh, I am using this supplier controller. I am uh, creating a, a concurrent hash map um, and also I am um, filling this um, hash map no, with, uh, well, hard coding inf uh, information. So um, if you see, it's a, a simple uh, IDs and list of suppliers. It's a map only. And the thing is that uh, we have a, a controller Yes, in this case, it's not a REST controller. We are going to have a, a kind of a WebSocket connection. So um, we have, a, in this case, I am using the this port. And this is the project for, for a WebSocket connection, is our socket. So when you are trying to add the dependency, you need to use this one, our socket IO. So uh, I am using this one instead of this one in my project. And also I don't use uh, databases, but I will use Lombok. So if I check uh, the POM XML, uh, I have this one. I have uh, the, the socket and also the Lombok dependency, only two. So uh, I create the message mapping. Um, that is this one. I am going to return a flux of, of suppliers and uh, I am passing a variable no? that is a company ID. So I am going to get a suppliers for a company. So uh, in this case, uh, if you remember, uh, the suppliers is a map. So um, I am going to, to get only the, or I am, I am going to filter uh, by company ID and this uh, list of supplier, uh, I am going to, to check if it's empty, then I am going to return a flux empty. If not, I am going to return a flux of suppliers using the from iterable method. So now I, I am going to run this. Okay. And the last project is uh, about two call of them of, of both of them connections. So um, the same, I I have a an exception, but I, I have a company, I have a supplier. And also I have a, an object that involves both of them, that is company and the list of suppliers. And uh, I have a, a demo client. This demo client is a component. Um, I am using two Venus, uh, that is our, our socket, con sorry, our socket requester and web client. Both of them are created in this class also. So for the first one, um, because it's a web, web socket, we are going to use the TCP protocol. So um, we are initializing the local host and the port 
if you remember the port, the port that we are using for uh, the WebSocket is this one, and it is this by for this port. So we are using we are configuring this, and in case of the HTTP connection, uh, we are returning only a, a builder. So um, yes, we are auto wiring this uh, both of them. So uh, in case of companies, companies is the HTTP connection. So uh, I am going to use this uh, URL. That is the connection that I use for, for my test. And in case of uh, the R socket, uh, we are going to route with this, uh, with suppliers and passing uh, the company ID variable. So, uh, once we have this, uh, both of them uh, clients, we are going to create REST controllers, no? So uh, in case of uh, companies, for example, uh, and also this is running on 9999 port. So um, And in this case, uh, for example, I am going to use uh, companies. Companies is going to connect with our first project. So for example, 9999 companies. Okay, it's fine. And now I am going to use, um, or I am going to, to check what is returning in case of suppliers. Uh, for example, is this one suppliers is going to create with uh, to, to get the, the suppliers. So I am going to use suppliers and the company ID. And if you can see, uh, I am getting the suppliers for the company ID five. And uh, what happened if, for example, in, in this part is, is important because you have the demo client and you are going to get the get supplier for company. But what happened if the companies are empty? So if you remember, uh, I mentioned the switch if empty method. And I said that when something is empty, we are going to have a other stream. So in this case, when we um, receive suppliers as empty, we are going to to uh, throw a, 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 an exception that is not found exception, and the the message will be this. So uh, then, uh, if I have here, uh, well, this is my log. But if I start here, the supplier six, for example, for company six, okay, I have an internal server error, but I have deception. There are not suppliers for the company six. That is this flow. So um, it's, it's a good uh, method to, to manage your streams during your pipes. And the last one is example is uh, to have a companies for suppliers. So um, what happened in this part, we are uh, requesting suppliers for company. Okay, but we don't have any um, controller in this moment uh, to return all of our companies, so no. So uh, all our companies and also uh, their suppliers. So what can we do to do this? Well, this part is something tricky. So I am going to try to explain you. So what happened? Okay, I am not passing any parameter. Uh, it's mean that I need to have all. So uh, what I am going to do is the first, I need to have the IDs of the companies, no? So, okay, 
the, the way that I need, I, that I get the companies is this one. This demo client get companies. Okay, yeah, it's, it's this. So in this moment, I have a flux of company. Okay, it's, it's good. Now, what happened with these companies? Okay, I need the ID to get the uh, suppliers for every ID, no? So what I need to do is, uh, okay, um, and, and it's moment to decide if I am going to use flat map or map. So uh, I know that companies dot map is going to transform my companies in, 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 well, yes, I am getting companies and I need to use the ID to get the suppliers. So for example, okay, I am going to use map. So for every company, Uh, I need to create something like new, um, sorry, is this dot demo client, demo client dot uh, get suppliers for company. And I am going to use company dot get ID. And this is a bar of uh, companies. If you can see, this is a flux of flux of supplier, okay? Because uh, get suppliers for company is returning a flux of, of supplier and a map is transforming to flux of these suppliers. And, and yeah, okay, it's correct. I, I have suppliers, but I need to have also the company. And if you see, we are losing the company with this transformation. So what can I do? Okay, well, I am going to use a, a map because yes, I need to transform. But also if you remember, we can use zip to create combinations. So uh, I am going to use uh, in this part, a mono and I am going to use a, a um, sorry. Okay, mono to combine if fluxes or, or, or monos that are streams, no? So in this case, I am going to combine company and, um, sorry, sorry, I, I lost the reference, sorry. I am going to, to combine company and I am going to combine the get suppliers for company. What happened in this part? Okay, mono no, uh, cannot resolve method, zip company flux supplier. Why? Because company is an object, not a publisher. And in this case, I need to have a publisher. So I am going to create a mono using the just method of company. And uh, also is uh, in this case, uh, I am going to use collect list. And uh, now we have this, a flux of mono in, in tuples of company and list of suppliers. If you have, if you see, we can have a flux 
flux of money. We have a tuples also. So we have many streams in this moment. So what I want to do is to flatten all of these tuples or all of, of, sorry, all of these streams in one, in only one stream. So it's, it's for this, yeah, okay, I am mapping, it's, it's correct. But instead of do, to use map in this moment, what I am going to do is to use flat map. So I am going to check, see, see this part because you are going to see the difference. Now we have flocks of tuples. So now what I want to do? Well, we have now tuples of company and list. So what is the only thing that it's missing? Okay, these tuples needs to be transformed in companies and list of suppliers or that and, and this is represented for the company supplier object. So what I need to do, okay. Um, companies transform it, um, okay. I am going to use a map. So the map has tuples. And these tuples are the input to create the company supplier uh, objects and a tuple.t1 is our customer and tuple is our suppliers. And that's it. It's the same that, that I have, but I want to, to explain what is happening. And that's it. We, are, we have created uh, the um, company suppliers objects to, to return. So uh, I am going to save. And now I am going to ask for the company suppliers. And that's it. We have the company ID one and its suppliers, two suppliers, three suppliers, four suppliers and five suppliers. And that's it. Uh, so I don't have if we have time so for some question of if you have any question. Looks like no questions. So uh, I'd like to say thanks a lot for this uh, performance. Uh, it was really interesting and uh, also thanks for all uh, who joined today and um, say see you next event have a nice evening all bye bye thank you thank you see you bye, everyone. have a nice day guys thank you thank, thank you. you very much thank you very much bye.